Yeah, a lot of questions about what the effects of that ending would look like. I want to get into this New York, <clears throat> excuse me, this New York Times interview that you did. It really just basically looking at, back at not just how you handled it, how the U.S. handled it overall. You talked about being perceived as kind of the personification of restrictions. And you had this quote that stood out to me. You said, show me a school that I shut down. Show me a factory that I shut down. Never. I never did. I gave a public health recommendation that echoed the CDC's recommendation. And people made a decision based on that. Now, I don't have to tell you that people who have criticized your your response have seized on that comment in particular to say, yeah, you weren't directly responsible for Prattville Elementary School closing or whatnot, but because of the recommendations that came from you and other top public health officials, those are decisions that you saw school administrators make, governors make, and you understand the influence that your recommendations had on decisions like that, right? Well, that's true, Caitlin, but the point that I made in my response uh, to the reporter in the New York Times article was that what it is is that there was a personification of me as a person who essentially closed everything down. Those were public health recommendations that came from the CDC, and I have always been very supportive of the CDC because they base their recommendations purely on public health issues. And the point that I made that as public health officials, it's our responsibility to give the public health perspective to it. The decision of how that balances with other considerations really comes from other authorities, from authorities who have things other than just the public health to be concerned about, economic and other considerations. So that's the point I was making. I was not trying to shun away from responsibility. We made a public health recommendation based on sound public health principles. But that's not the only issue that you need to consider when you're in the middle of an outbreak. Well, you have right. to consider a number of other things, and that's the point we're making. I right. think a lot of parents and teachers would say, well, yeah, the CDC, when they made these recommendations, they should have considered the effects that learning loss would have on children when they're making a decision like that. Is that, is that something you agree with? No, I do. I, I believe that you have to consider a, a variety of other things. But remember, at the time that the shutdown occurred, I mean, you have to distinguish, Caitlin, between the crisis at the point when our hospitals were being overrun and we were having cooler trucks to put bodies in because we didn't have enough room in a morgue, that's when things shut down. The real issue is how long do you keep that shutdown? How long do you keep the schools closed? And if you recall and go back on many of the things I've said in a lot of interviews, is that we've got to do whatever we can to get the schools open and get them open safe and keep them open. And I've said that many, many times. But the initial decision early on in the middle of that crisis, I believe, was the right decision. How long you kept them closed really varied depending upon the locale. In addition to schools, masking was probably one of the most divisive parts of COVID. I think whether or not people wore one, whether they had to wear one. A really striking comment.